Hey, 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 can you believe it? It's the second of October. No, I'm not going to do the towel thing. It's because you wishy washy woody woody woodies. Okay, you're all scared about it, you big freakazoids. Um, maybe that'll make you feel better. Second. The second, the second, the second, the second. Here we go. Second, 1001, 1002, 1003. I'm just kidding you. All right. Higher power here. Daily practice of the 12 step program enables us to change from what we were to people guided by God. I never knew that. I knew this news to me. How long have I been telling you this? Who have we been? And who have we become? There are a couple of ways to answer the question. One of the very simple is we come to Narcotics Anonymous as addicts and our addiction killing us in Narcotics Anonymous we've been freed from our obsession with drugs and compulsive use and our lives have changed but that's only the tip of the iceberg now we have to really now we have really been. Let me try that again. Who? Yes. Have we really been in the past? We were people without power or direction. We felt like we had no purpose, no reason for living. Our lives didn't make any more sense to us than they did to our families, our friends, or our neighbors. You see, as an addict, I was the last to know. You know, I didn't know I had a problem. You know, um, I thought I was perfectly fine, but I wasn't. I was sick up here. I was believing my own lies and my deceitfulness and my idiotic thinking. Seriously. I was the only one who didn't know I was an addict. Everybody else told me and I used to knock them out with words or my fists. I didn't want to hear that. Who are we really becoming? Today, we're not merely clean addicts, but we are people with a sense of direction, a purpose, and a power greater than ourselves. Through daily practice of the 12 steps, we begin to understand addiction, wrapped out feelings, motives, and behavior. Gradually, the directive forces of our disease has been replaced by living, giving force of God. Recovery comes more than clean up. It means powering up. Oh, I like that. I really like that. Doesn't that just really get your motor jumping, your mojo going? It's not the power, it's the power too. I mean, how simple is that? We have done more than shed some of our bad habits. We have become new people, guided by God. Just for today, the guidance I need to become a new person is ready at hand. Today, I will drill further away from the old 
back and direction and closer to my God. The closer you draw to God, the further you get away from Him. Did you get this? Have you got this? Get this at least, please. As a, 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 a new addict, at least get this. It's only small things that I read okay so it's only a small little blurb but today we are going to look at step one and I'll only read part of it and we'll do the other tomorrow or the next day. Step one. We admitted we were powerless over our addictions and our lives have become unmanageable. As addicts, we have each experienced a pain, loneliness, and desire of addiction. Before coming to NA, most of us tried everything we could to think of to control our use of drugs. We tried switching drugs, thinking that we only had a problem with that one particular drug. We tried limiting our drug use to certain times or places. Weekend warriors, you know, Friday night pounders, you know. We may even have vowed to stop using altogether at a certain point. We have told ourselves we would never go and do the things we watched other addicts do, then found ourselves doing those very things. Nothing we tried had any lasting effect. Our addictive addiction continued to progress, overpowering even our best intentions alone, terrified of what the future held for us. We found a fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous. As members of Narcotics Anonymous, our experience is that addiction is a progressive disease. It means it's not just the using. That's not. That's the symptom. That's the behavior. Okay. So it, 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 the outward manifestation of our behavior doesn't matter what's in here. We have to find out why we use, what the reason is, the purpose behind it. Through this guide, we're going to do that. As long as we are using drugs, our lives will steadily go downhill. It would be impossible to precisely describe addiction in a way that is agreeable to everyone. However, the disease seems to affect us in the following general ways. Mentally, we become obsessed with thoughts of using. Physically, we develop compulsion to continue using. Regardless of consequences, spiritually, we become totally self-centered in the course of our addiction. Looking at addiction as a disease makes sense to a lot of addicts because in our experience, addiction is progressive, incurable, and can be fatal unless arrested. I can't even begin to tell you how many times in a room I've seen a newcomer come in the room, be all gun ho about it, only to go back out and use again. Now, why do you think that was? One word steps. In Narcotics Anonymous, we deal with every aspect of our addiction not just its most obvious symptom, our uncontrollable drug use. The effects of our disease are numerous. By participating in this program, 
we each discover the ways in which our addiction affects us personally. Regardless of the individual effects of addiction on our lives, as all of us share some common characteristics, though through working the first step, we will address the obsession, the compulsion, the denial, and what may have tended a spiritual void. As we examine and acknowledge all these aspects of our disease, we start to understand our powerlessness. Many of us have had problems with the idea that as addicts we are obsessive and compulsive. The idea of those words applied to us make, may have had us cringe. Sure did me. However, obsession and compulsion need to understand the acknowledgement of their presence in our lives, and our admission of powerlessness is to be complete. Obsession for us is a never-ending stream of thoughts related to drug use, running out of drugs, getting more drugs, and so on. We simply can't get those thoughts out of our minds. In our experience, compulsion is the ir natural impulse to keep using drugs, no matter what the result. We can't stop. We address the obsession compulsion here as they relate to our drug use. Because when we first come into the program, our drug addiction is how we identify with each other and this program. As we continue in our recovery, we will see how those aspects in our addiction can manifest themselves in many areas of our life. Denial was a big one for me. Denial is part of our disease that makes it difficult, if not impossible, to acknowledge the reality. In our addiction, denial protected us from seeing the reality of what our lives had become. We often told ourselves that given the right set of circumstances, we might still be able to bring ourselves under control never going to happen. No. Always skillful in defending our actions, we refuse to accept responsibility for the damage done by our addiction. We believe that if we tried long enough and hard enough, substituted one drug for another, switching friends or changing our living arrangements or occupations, our lives would prove to be improved. Didn't work, did it? The realization and repeatedly failed us, yet we continued to cling to them. We deny what we had a problem with drugs Regardless of all the evidence to the contrary, we lied to ourselves, believing that we could use again successfully if we justified our actions despite the wreckage around us, resulting from our addiction. Denial is a huge part of coming out of addiction. It was one of the hardest ones I had to deal with. You know, um, denial is a liar, it really is. It had me believing that 
this was the insane thinking that yours truly had. I actually believed that I could control my drug use. And when people told me, oh, you, you can't quit. I can quit any time I want. I just don't want to quit today. Seriously? <laughs> Honestly? That's a lie straight from the pits of hell, in my opinion. You know? That's me thinking with this. And yet knowing in here that I'm being stupid, ridiculous, idiotic, and immature and childish. But could I believe that? No. Because I was perfection personified. All right. So. Tomorrow, we're going to continue with that. We're going to look at spirituality. May God bless and keep you. And keep you safe.